We are a family, like a giant tree, stretching up to the sky. Never heard that song. This is called Dream Girls. Look it up. Uh. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and I'm a Messy Bun teacher. I am a middle school teacher in Middle Tennessee. And today's video is all about organization. And so we are gonna be talking about a little bit of classroom management, word balls, and a little bit of everything. Got my ass coffee, let's go. Okay, so this is a video that's part two of this big series of organization. I love organizing and I have loved organizing since I was a little kid. I was that weird little kid that color coded all of her toys. This is the second episode of the organization series. And just to expound on what we talked about in the first episode is that when there is a lack of organization or planning, there really is a lack of joy in your career. Now that doesn't mean you don't love your job, that just means you can be very overwhelmed and stressed out and you don't even know where to start. I believe that these videos can eliminate the stress of keeping up with paperwork and keeping up with everything that has to do with teaching. That way you can focus on really what matters and that is your students and the relationships you have with them. I'm going to show you a few things that I like to do for back to school prep in particular. There are a few big projects that I like to work on during the summer. That way I don't feel super overloaded with, you know, all the things that you are doing in the summer with trips and hanging out with your family and all that fun stuff. Cause that's important too. So I usually pick two or three big projects to work on this summer for back to school prep. This summer, I am choosing a little bit of classroom management and my word wall. All right, the first thing I'm gonna be doing is my word wall. And you might be thinking, I'm a high school teacher. I need to skip this part. I highly encourage, I don't care if you teach pre-K or if you teach seniors in high school, you need a word wall. I don't care if you teach math, I don't care if you teach science or ELA or social studies, you need a word wall. Why? Because A, it's visually important to help those students, not even just ELL students, but all students to help them with vocabulary. It's such a good visual of what unit you are in. I know that I teach history, American history and ELA, and I have a word wall for all of my social studies words and a word wall for all of my root words, which I'm gonna get into in just a second. Even if you teach AP US history in high school, I highly recommend doing a word wall, and it doesn't have to be this kitty little pre-K looking thing, but really having a visual with the vocabulary word on display somewhere in your classroom will really, really help your students. So let me show you what I'm gonna be working on. This past year, I already made my social studies word wall, and I bought them on TBT by Brain Wrinkles, and I'll put their TBT store right here. And I put them on my whiteboard. And I didn't have anything for my ELA vocabulary. And I was trying to think, because we do root words in fifth grade, and I really wanted not just the roots and the prefixes and suffixes to be seen, but I needed a visual for them. Again, not just for English language learners, but for all of my students, because most students are visual learners. And so I found on TPT, and I'll link her below, uh, these awesome roots that had not only the root and the meaning, but also a picture with it. And so I was thinking, instead of just having all of my, you know, word wall cards just sprout, a, sprout, that's not a word, root cards just tucked in a file somewhere where I don't know where they are, I thought I could get something that is less expensive, that is at Hobby Lobby, and it's beautiful, it's colorful. So let me show you what I have. So I have this and you can actually get a whole set of these in like a like a suitcase looking thing at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or wherever. And these are photo cases. So you usually back in the day when you actually printed out pictures, um, you would put down, put pictures in here. But I've seen many teachers use these for many uses, task cards, puzzles, word sorts, all sorts of unit things that they need. I thought I could use this. I found this at Hobby Lobby and I, you know, I used my 40% off coupon 
And I thought I could organize all of my root word wall cards. How many times can I say that fast? So um, yes, it's beautiful. I love, I don't really have a theme in my classroom, but I just love all bright colors. And so what I did, let me show you what it looks like before laminating. So hers looks like this, real simple, but I love that it had the root and the picture, what it means, and if it's Greek, Latin, or whatever. And then I would cut it out and laminate it. Obviously, I'm not fully done yet because that's my summer project. And then I'm going to organize it by unit. I think there's 30 units throughout the year. And um, I'm going to organize it by unit. So I already have some cut and laminated. And I think there's three to four roots per unit. So I'm probably gonna just get simple paper clip. Let's say these are the three that are in the first unit, paper clip them, clip them together and put them in this first one. And I'll probably just label this unit one through 10 or one through five and put it in there. Again, you can use these picture holders for so many things. If you do task cards, if you do centers, if you do little puzzles, word sorts, whatever you need, I would highly recommend getting one of these. And you can probably find these on Amazon. I'll link it below, but I did find mine at Hobby Lobby and I got it 40% off. So I highly recommend that. Again, word wall is so important, even for seniors in high school. It's such a good visual. Vocabulary is key in whatever you teach, whether it's math, whether it's science, a word wall is very, very important. So maybe that's something you can work on. And I know that Teachers Pay Teachers has a bunch of different word walls that pertain to all different kinds of subjects, but cutting those out, laminating those, or coming up with a cool way to do it. Maybe you do a digital word wall, or maybe you have the kids make the word wall, make them a part of it. But having that displayed in your classroom all year long is going to help them tremendously. So I highly recommend using and working on a word wall this summer. All right, the second one I'm so excited about because I'm changing it up this year. My principal in my observation this last year really encouraged me to work on giving work for early finishers. And I knew that that was important, but he really stressed that this year. And I thought, you know what? I need to revamp that area in my classroom because you know, not every student finishes at the exact same time. You're always gonna have five or 10 early finishers that need something to do. You don't want students just sitting there when they're done with work and, you know, talking to their partners or getting someone else in trouble or making, you know, a scene. You want to keep them busy, but also give them something educational and fun because if they do really good job and work hard on their work, then reward them, but also keep them to where they're working on something and not bothering others. Last year, I just had a desk and a few cute containers that had early finishers work. This year, I thought I would kind of go up a notch and um, pie, pie. I would buy this cart and I got this from Walmart. You can find this on Amazon. You can find this at Hobby Lobby, Michaels, wherever, but I will link the one I bought. Mine was at Walmart and it was under 20, no, it was under $30 and I bought it last year. We actually used it for an end table in our living room and I stole it. My husband came home, he was like, what? <laughs> he was like, where's our end table? And I was like, what end table? <laughs> teacher spouses, you know what I'm talking about. Any other teachers like steal things from their own houses and put them in their classroom? You do what you gotta do. Um, anyway, so we put, my husband and I, we have a cricket and we put on early cricket? finisher. Cricket? I said a cricket. Someone said cricket. A cricket? I have a cricket. And early finishers, are you done? Are you proud? Because I don't want them just to rush through their work so they can be a part of any of these activities, but I want them to be proud of what they do. And when they are finished, are you proud of what you did? So I thought that would be really cool to put on the front. You don't have to be all fancy and get a cricket or anything like that. I know that you can even buy vinyl that's already pre-cut and pre-made if you wanted to do this. That way you don't have to purchase an expensive Cricut, but we've had ours for years. Um, you can even, you know, print it out on a cardstock and tape it up here if you wanted to do a label. So 
Um, you don't have to do labels if you don't want. You do what's best for you. I just knew that labels are great for my kids so they know exactly where to go when they are finished. So I have this little section and I'm gonna put this at the back of my room. And when I do a classroom setup video, I'll show a picture um, of how I set this up. But for right now, my students, and I teach middle school, so yes, some of these things might sound elementary. Trust me, even middle schoolers love some of these things. So let me show you what I have. Um, I need to get a new book box, but in here, they are obsessed with word searches. And I made my own word search. You can do this for free. Just Google customized word search and I put their names in it. That's always a fun thing to do. If you do like Miss Morse Loves or My Classroom, whatever it is, and you put all their first names in there, they flip out. They're like, oh, they find their names, they find their friends' names. It's super fun. You can do that for free. But these are at the dollar store, cheap, easy. Um, they love word, word searches, coloring books, dot to dot, whatever it is. Um, but I literally just put books in here. I have more in my classroom, but can't go in there right now. And I literally just put it in a little book box and they can grab it, finish a page and just put it back. I don't have to cut it out, tear it up and put it in individual papers. Just keep it in the book, which is nice. I have a little caddy. I don't have anything in here, but you could just keep some extra supplies in here. This was from the Dollar Tree. This is also from the Dollar Tree. Check out some Dollar Tree stuff. Okay, Walmart, Dollar Tree, you don't have to spend a million dollars on your classroom, okay? And I just put extra crayons in here. And this one, this was the coolest hack that I figured out. I was thinking to myself, because my kids, again, they're in middle school, they are obsessed with puzzles. Obsessed. And I thought anytime I would buy the puzzle it was in that cardboard box, it would always get torn pieces would get lost and I was just frustrated. I was like, even though th these are a dollar, guys, we gotta take care of our things. So I was at the Dollar Tree and I saw these little containers. They come in three. So you get three for $1 at the Dollar Tree. And what I did, and this was actually a matching game, but I put the puzzle inside and I cut and hot glued the top to the top of the container. So let me show you, this is actually a matching game, but for like this Spider-Man one, I put the puzzle inside. I think this was like a 100 piece one and I cut the picture out so they can use it as a reference and hot glued it on there. Boom. This wasn't even a dollar. This is in a three pack. Easy, super cheap way to organize puzzles. Puzzles is such a good extra activity when they're done because it uses their Puzzles are. Oh, puzzles are. Duh. <laughs> Duh. Puzzles are. Puzzles are such a great activity for them to do when they're done because they think it's just a fun little game, but it actually helps them use critical thinking skills, all the sorts of things. So I highly recommend these. All the puzzles I bought were at the Dollar Tree. Dollar Tree. And these little containers I bought from the Dollar Tree. Okay, so I'll link them below as well. So these are actually my own kids' puzzles because my puzzles from school are still in my classroom, but I have probably six puzzles that they can choose from, and they know they need to make sure they pick up all the pieces and put it back. Um, so that's what I have up here. Uh, this, I already showed you what that is. This is another little hack I found at Walmart. If you go into the post, post-it notes section, and there are these little crayon boxes, and they literally just say crayon box, they're a dollar. You're welcome, they're a dollar. And I keep all my card games in here. Now this one I bought, it's called Word Monkeys. It's one of our favorites. It's actually like a mix between, what would you say? Scrabble and Uno. I love that game. Yeah, it's a super fun game. But it's really good for vocabulary and spelling. I highly recommend this. I'll link this below, but I found this on Scholastic's website. But I think I can look it up on, on Amazon. So anyways, um, I my kids love Uno. A good one for math is called Dose, and it's by the makers of Uno. And they have to use their math skills, their um, 
adding and subtracting skills. So this would be good for an elementary classroom and honestly for any classroom because it really is a fun way to help them think real fast. And so this one's called Dose. And you know how big an Uno set is? It's pretty big. It fits the whole entire set. So let me show you what it. You just take off the little sides, open it up, voila, you have your little card game. Do that again and say voila. I think it's with a V. What did I say? Voila. I didn't say voila. It's voila. 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 Um, I have Uno. Uno is always a fun one. I have normal cards that they can play um, a game with. Monopoly Deal is one of our favorites to play. I'm going to probably purchase this for my classroom. But this one is, again, you have to use your math skills. But it's super fun for critical thinking, for problem solving. Um, it's super, super fun. So that would be a good one to put in there. And my favorite, I talked about this in my Amazon haul. And it is, oh, there it is, Taco Cat Goat Cheese Pizza. This one, they have to focus and pay attention. And so that is always good for, I would probably suggest this for second all the way up. Um, this would be a super fun one to put. But again, these are just a dollar. Having those little cardboard card holders did not work. They would tear. It was a mess. So getting these little plastic containers from Walmart for just a dollar, highly recommend that. So I put that down here. Um, again, you can customize however you feel like would be successful for your students. But I just know last year what worked for my students, and I'm sure I'll change a little bit for my future students this coming up year. But I know that these things were a hit. I'll probably add a few more things this school year and keep you updated. But I highly, highly recommend doing an early finishers center, even if it's something that you put on your board that they can do and that they may do. Whatever it is, that's gonna help keep all your students engaged from bell to bell. I need a coffee break. that I'm going to be working on. Actually, the last thing I worked on is already done, so I'm excited to tell you about that. But this next thing I found, surprise, surprise, on Instagram. If you do not have a teacher account on Instagram, stop what you're doing, pause this video, get onto Instagram, and add your own teacher account. Only follow teachers. That way you have your personal and your teacher account. I highly recommend it. It is going to change your life. It's being a little dramatic, but it's true. It is the best PD. The best PD is just scrolling through your Instagram account and seeing these incredible teachers come with the most amazing ideas. So pause this video, get on your teacher account. I found on the Creative Classroom, Ashlyn created these amazing classroom management resources. And she has a TPT store, so I'll put her right here. And I'll also link her below. But in my mind, classroom management is kind of, you have to be flexible with it because all your students and your classes are going to be different. So you don't know exactly what the needs of the students will be just yet, but I highly recommend start looking for some sort of resource that will jumpstart your classroom management at the very beginning of the year. Because if you have your procedures, expectations displayed and set for the very beginning of the year, that's going to help you in your longevity of your school year. And so last year I did team points and it went well. We had to change it throughout the year, which again, as teachers, we have to be flexible. If something's not working, have a family meeting and figure it out. That's another good tip. Sometimes, and I've been very guilty of that, I would come up with my own classroom expectations or 
um, come up with my own consequence or whatever. But I've learned within the last couple years that when you include the students and when you say the words family meeting, when you need to talk to your whole class because something's not fitting and something that is not going right, they feel like they're included and they feel like they have a voice. And that has helped me a lot. So this last year, this certain class would not stop talking. And I was up to here with it. No, I was like up to here with it. And so instead of just yelling and getting on to them constantly, the next day I told them, okay, I turned the lights down. I sat down in my little chair in front of the class and I put them in a circle and I said, we're going to have a class or excuse me. I put them in a circle and I said, we're going to have a family meeting. The first time I said that, the kids were like, we're not in your family. And I was like, actually, you are. I see you more than I actually see my own family. We are a family. We are a family like a giant tree stretching up to the sky. Anybody know where that's from? I've never heard that song. It's called Dream Girls. Look it up. Uh... I love me some Dream Girls. So I started to use that often. And so they knew what I meant when I said, we're going to have a family meeting. That didn't mean I was going to just come down hard on them. That meant we were going to talk about what things we need to grow in, what classroom goals we need to work on, what things that we're not doing so well in and how we could fix that. How can Miss Morris help you fix that? And so that has helped me a lot. So yes, I'm going to start with a classroom management kind of activity, kind of a game expectation at the very beginning of the year. But if I need to change it up in October, then I'm going to change it up because I'm going to do what's best for my kiddos. And by then I'll probably know what's best. This is a fun little activity to help them to get engaged and to help them focus on what they need to work on as a whole class. I'll talk more about that on a different video with student goals by themselves, their individual goals. But as a whole class, um, I would come up with a goal together. I would ask them, what do you think we need to work on this week? A lot of the times I'll give them ideas. Sometimes they'll come up with better ideas than I came up with. Like for instance, we need to get to our bell work right away. We need to do better at transitions or we need to keep our talking to a minimum when we're working on activities or we need to do better when we're doing teamwork or whatever. So you would display your goal on your board and then you would put this cute little uh, form on you put this cute little form underneath your classroom goal. So let's say for instance, it is, we are going to get to our bell work as we enter the classroom. That way they focus and work on getting to their bell work, having a seat and getting right to it instead of lollygagging, <laughs> lollygaggers. And so the fun thing about this is when I see that the students are working hard on their goal or doing just really good job on whatever positive behavior that I see, you get to, or you can have a student remove an emoji from the board. It just zoomed out because I can see it from the mirror. Can you start with that thing over? Three, two. Okay, so you would choose as a class what goal you would need to work on. So let's say the class and I, we decided to work on our bell work. We would come right into the classroom doors, grab our journals and look at the board and get right to our bell work without lolly gagging, lolly gagging. And so underneath the classroom goal, you would put this. This is a scan it sheet and you'll see what's underneath the emojis. This is what makes it really fun. So if I see positive behavior or them working extremely hard on their goal, then I would take off or you can have a student take off an emoji. And I, all I did was attach it with tape. I asked Ashlyn how to best um, put this on there so it doesn't ruin the card. Um, Cause I was thinking uh, Velcro dots, but that didn't work. So tape would be the best and that's easy. We all have tape. And so hopefully throughout the week, we would remove all of the emojis and the anticipation is worth it. I love seeing the kids just getting excited because what they don't know is this QR code, as you can see, a QR code is being revealed. The QR code is going to be scanned, but it can only be scanned if all nine cards are removed. And that means that I am looking to see if they're working on their classroom goal 
Are they treating each other well? Are they following the expectations? And if they are, then we can remove an emoji. Now, hopefully by the end of the week or earlier, the QR code will be revealed. You will scan it and it will reveal to the class what the prize is. And I believe this one was the um, sit by your friend one. And she has, I think 25 different classroom prizes. So here's another one. You can easily do that. If you don't know, you just pull up, if you have an iPhone, sorry, Android, I don't know if it's, if it works for you, I'm sure it does. But you pull up your camera, pull up photo, and all you do, make sure, whoop, it scanned it. STEM challenge, I don't know if you can see that at the top. So obviously I would know which one um, this reward is, and I would have that ready to go. And the students, it's like, anticipation, drum roll please, scan it, ah, oh, STEM challenge. And she has everything from flashlight, to PJ day, to popcorn party, to extra recess, whatever, super fun things. The other cool thing is that she has, um, I don't think I have it here, but she has blank ones that you can come up with your own prizes. So I'm going to customize one, I know at least, because last year it was the biggest prize that my students wanted. They always requested this prize. So I'm gonna introduce you to that in just a second. I do wanna mention, if you love Astro Brights as much as I do, I just found the prettiest palette. I can't find it anywhere. I only found it at Walmart. I can't even find it on Amazon, but it's called Tropical Colors. Can we just look at the beauty? I'm obsessed. So if you ever see the Astro Bright Tropical Colors, will you let me know because I need to stock up on this because this is just the prettiest palette. I sidetracked. So anyways, I'm going to customize one of these to my own prize because I know that the kids would love it. I'm gonna introduce to you one of the best prizes. Again, I teach middle school. You can do this in middle school too. Maybe even in high school. It is called Mr. Sketch Tattoos. And you're like, what? We don't give tattoos to our kids. That's wrong, Brittany. Mr. Sketch, we all know what Mr. Sketch is. And I actually only have a few in here because all my Mr. Sketch markers are in my classroom, sad. But I display this graphic and I'll put it right here. This graphic is shown to the kids. They have to choose the flavor and they have to choose the logo that they want. I only allow them to choose their hand, their arm, and what was it? I think it was just their hand and their arm and maybe their wrist. Uh, but anyways, this is the print, this is the visual that I show them. That way they know exactly what they want to choose and I'm not coming up to them and they're, I don't know what I want. I think I want SpongeBob on an island in turquoise. No, we're not doing that. So I give them a list of what they can choose from. And they always ask for this. Always, always, always. And it's cheap. You just buy Mr. Sketch a little container and have it as a reward and display this little graphic. You can use this graphic. I can put it in my description below as well. And they just love it. I know that Mr. Sketch has many different flavors. I have the movie theater one, which has like Coke and popcorn and nacho cheese. They always love the nacho cheese. I even have a stinky Mr. Sketch one and they love that. So many kids want the blue cheese flavor, which cracks me up. But again, I teach middle school and the kids die over this. They love it. So I'm definitely gonna put this in for a class reward. So if you wanna do that, Mr. Sketch Tattoos. So my last and final one is pretty easy and simple. It is create your own Amazon wish list for your classroom. I actually just did this last year and it was my first time doing that because I am one of those, sometimes I'm afraid to ask for help. I know that you and I, we spend so much money on our classroom because we know our kids deserve the best. And a lot of the times it just, it's hard because it just hurts our own budget, but I want to do and bring in the best things for my kids. So what I decided, and I've seen other teachers do this, 
is create my own classroom wish list on Amazon and I put everything that I would love to have in my classroom or what I would need in the next year. And then I would just put it out to friends and family, whether I text them or put it on Facebook or email it to my friends and my family, whatever you want to do to share it, share it. Give them the opportunity to bless your classroom. There are so many people out there, especially this year, seeing that the teachers did so much for their kids during virtual learning, they want to help teachers. It is okay to ask for help. Now you can word it to where you're not looking like you're begging for things, but you're just giving people the opportunity to where they can take part in your classroom this year by blessing you with things that would bless your students. I'm going to show you how to do that. So what you would do, and again, phones over here so you can see, is get onto your Amazon, hopefully you have an Amazon uh, app, and then you're going to go to these three little lines down here and you're going to click on your list. Now I already have mine made. It says Mrs. Morris wish list, but I'm going to act like I haven't made one yet. So you're going to click on create a list. Okay. And you're going to name it. So I'll put Mrs. Bailey classroom. Mrs. Bailey. <laughs> it's my maiden name. And then you're going to click create list. I have Mrs. Morse already. So this is my fake. Oh. So now that you have your list made, you can go into Amazon and look up what you want. So let's say you did want some Astro Bright paper. And let's say you wanted this mega pack. So you click on that. And down here, you would click add to list. And you would find your list and click on that. Now let's say I wanted some laminating pouches. I found the one I wanted, click on it, scroll down, add to list, click on your list, and boom. Now let's say you're ready to share it to Facebook or text it to your friends and family. So you're gonna click on those lines again, click on your list, go to your classroom list and these three dots at the top, click on that, send list to others. And you're going to click view only because you don't want people to edit it. Copy link, you can email it, text message or whatever. So let's say I want to copy it, copied, and I wanna go into Facebook or I wanna email it and you simply just paste it. And that's how you create your Amazon wish list. Again, People are out there that want to invest in your classroom and give them the opportunity to do that. And also just knowing that you want to give so much to your classroom, but don't feel like you have to buy every single thing. Go into thrift stores or Dollar Tree, make it easier on you so you're not breaking the bank because we all know we want the best classroom and the most inviting atmosphere for our students but I don't want you to break your bank because of that. Let others that want to give and they don't know how to do that, how do they help teachers, give them that opportunity to help. And if they can't, that is totally fine because I know that you will do the most amazing job at creating the best classroom, even if you have only 20 bucks to spend. Believe me, I don't have a whole lot of money and I have learned to work around that, going to thrift stores and to Dollar Tree and to Walmart and Target Dollar Spot and just doing the best. Ask for teachers that are retiring or look on Facebook Marketplace. There are so many teachers that are giving away books or giving away classroom resources or materials. Uh, you can find those things other than just going and paying full price for something. Because I know that when you want everything to go in your classroom at the very first year. It's hard because just things are so expensive. So learn to invest in smaller things or in one big piece in your classroom. And then the next year invest in another piece or a few pieces. That way you're not breaking the bank at the very beginning of the year. Again, what matters is your relationship with your students. So buy things or let people donate things to your classroom that will make them feel welcomed feel loved and feel at home because that's really what matters. Yes, you can buy the cutesy organized things and the things that will, you know, make your aesthetic just 
pop and be perfect. But remember, what matters most is that the students feel at home and that they feel welcomed and that you feel at home as well. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you give it a thumbs up so it can reach other teachers. Also hit that subscribe button if you're not subscribed yet and that notification bell because it will give you alerts on all the other videos coming out in this series of organization. Again, my name is Brittany. I'm a Messy Bun teacher. Life can be messy, but there's always joy to be found. I'll see you in the next video. Oh, thank you. We ain't well. That's a wrap. <laughs>